Hi guys. All right. So um, today I'm going to go over a little bit of biochem. Monday's lecture was talking about um, sugar structures, um, sugar digestion and utilization and where it goes. So uh, I'm going to start off with structure. So here up here we have a sugar's empirical formula. So you'll notice that the letter N is in the subscript for each of these molecules, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. N can be filled in with any number, and it would be the proper ratios for a sugar. And so that's why it's called an empirical formula. Instead of just putting numbers down there, we're able to say all sugars follow this formula. Um, the smallest sugar would have a three, so it would be three carbons, six hydrogens, three oxygens. Um, glucose and the common sugars tend to have six, so six carbon, 12 hydrogen, six oxygen. So if you know this empirical formula, you can figure out what ratios your sugar should have. So if you have any questions on um, what is the makeup of which of these is not a sugar on a test, you'll be able to go through this and say, aha, that one has one less oxygen than it should, and therefore it's not actually a sugar. So, moving on. So each sugar has, um, at least lots of the common sugars, have alpha and beta forms. Um, they also have dextro and levo forms. We're going to start with alpha and beta, then we'll move on to dextro and levo. levo. So alpha and beta. If you look down here, there's a ring right here. Let me fix this. There's a ring that shows um, hydroxyl groups coming off in a certain pattern. This pattern of hydroxyls down, down, up, down is glucose. And you'll notice that I've numbered the carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 up here. You number the carbons coming off of the oxygen here is the first carbon near the oxygen. Okay, this one is called alpha, this boxed hydroxyl that I put over here, the OH. This is what makes it alpha glucose versus over here where the hydroxyl is facing up, that is beta glucose. Okay, that is the difference between alpha and beta. Now, it's interesting and good to know that these can, in liquid solution, change into each other at a very low rate. So there's about a 1 in 5,000 chance that if you picked up a single glucose molecule and looked at it underneath a microscope, there's a 1 in 5,000 chance that you would get one that actually has this bond broken. And so it's not even a ring at that point. Um, water molecules, as we know, have a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. And so those charges are constantly pulling and pushing at the glucose molecule. And so the negatives are pulling on the positives, and the positives are pulling on the negatives, and sometimes that manages to break this bond. It's not very common. One in 5,000 chance that any one that you were looking at would have that bond broken. But when that bond is broken, this first carbon can wheel around in space, okay? And so it's, it's rotating around this bond. It's, um, imagine a wheel. So this is the axle, and then there's a wheel with some spokes coming off, and you can just spin it. And then eventually that wheel um, will have a spoke reform to the oxygen bond because it, it's magnetics. So um, these two want to be bonded quite a lot. But where was the hydroxyl spoke when those bonded? Was it up or was it down? If it was down, then you get alpha glucose again assuming you start with alpha glucose, and if, you, uh, if it stops when it's up, then you get beta glucose. And that's how those two are different and can change in solution. So in, in our body, we manufacture alpha glucose, and then we stick it into um, chains called glycogen to keep it in alpha glucose because if it's if it's bound together then it's not going to do this thing so that's one of the reasons we don't just have it free floating everywhere right so we can digest alpha glucose we cannot digest beta glucose um, especially when it's in a chain all right so I'm going to show you a glycosidic bond, and then we'll move on to dextro and levo forms.
as well as some monosaccharides. So if, all right, so the first carbon and the fourth carbon of two monosaccharides, glucose in this case, come together and a glycosidic bond is formed by one of them, the, uh, I believe that it is the first carbon, see, carbon one loses both O and H, whereas carbon four on the other molecule loses just H, and so you've lost H2O, which should tell you, what is this? A condensation or dehydration reaction. And so this goes out, and these two guys bond to each other, okay? And I'm going to draw the O in the center because that's the way you'll see it most of the time. All right? And you'll notice that both of these were on the same side. Um, this was an alpha glucose, and so the OH started on the bottom. And that's the same as the uh, uh, carbon-4 hydroxyl was on the bottom, too. And so those are on the same side. This is a 1-4 alpha glycosidic bond. Um, I'm going to put GB, a glucose glycosidic bond. 1,4 alpha bond. That's why it's called a 1 carbon 1, 4 carbon 4 glycosidic bond alpha because the carbon that was binding right here was an alpha carbon and that it was beneath. It doesn't matter what's over here on this one because it hasn't done any binding yet. This is the one that tells you whether it's an alpha or beta glycosidic bond. Make sense? I hope so. Um, so moving on, if you have this one binding, you can imagine that there's a hydroxyl down here from the next, this is carbon four on our imaginary um, glucose that I should have pre-drawn. All right, so this one would have to go over, down, and over, and it would have the oxygen in the middle. And that is, um, See how it has, yeah, so that is a beta glycosidic bond. We can't break this down. We don't have an enzyme to break this down. This is called cellulose. This is starch or glycogen, this alpha one, okay? So we can't break down this one. We don't have an enzyme that fits around it. We don't have an enzyme that has a specific site that binds to it magnetically properly. And so if you eat that, it's called fiber and it will not be digested or taken in. Um, there are other things that can digest cellulose. We humans cannot. All right, so that's alpha and beta. We've also gone over the empirical formula. And I'm gonna get rid of this, do, 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 do. All right, moving on. I guess. Moving on, we have dextro and levo, and for that, I think that we are going to, um, we're, yes, we have time. All right, Fischer projection is what this is called. So this is glucose when you cut this bond right here, and then you have the uh, double bond right there. And so that's this one right here. This is carbon number one, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number three. I hope you see where I'm going with this, right? So it goes all the way down. So these are the same molecules, okay? So this one, we can see that, first off, there's, um, you'll notice that carbon number three has the hydroxyl on the left. All the others have the hydroxyls on the right, okay? If you look over here at both of these, carbon number three has the hydroxyl on the top, so take a look at that. This... These ones don't have that it can break and spin thing because they're not next to the oxygen. And then this one's also more stable because of this thing going on here. So this bond right here is the one that can break. And so number one is a little bit special in that it can um, do this. This is actually showing it when it's broken. And this is called a hemiacetal because you have acetone right here. This is an acetone group, so it's called a hemiacetal. Um, you also will get into, when we see fructose, what is called a hemiketal, which are the two, um, which is when you have a ketone. So a ketone is a double bonded oxygen somewhere in the middle of a chain, and acetone or acetal 
is when there's a double bonded oxygen at the end of the chain. Okay? So going back to glucose and dextro-levo positioning, right here we have what is called dextro-glucose. And that is when the hydroxyl is above in this kind of a... When you're showing it this way, it's above the molecule, whereas all the others are below. There's also something called a chair formation, which is just another way of looking at the molecule. In that formation, for those of you that are familiar with it, it is whether or not the bond is axial or equatorial. And so we'll leave that for another time. I don't think she got into that. But if you're interested, you can go and look up axial and equatorial. All right. So dextro and levo. Dextro and levo have the same structure except they're mirrored. So this structure, where there's one hydroxyl on the left here, is called dextro. All the other hydroxyls are on the right. It's also glucose because only the number three hydroxyl is different than all the other ones. Okay? So if I changed... I'll do it here. If I changed so that this went over to here, and then I think you would get the idea. If I switched all of these so that this was on the left, so that this was on the right, cut, redo. So this is the dextro configuration of glucose. You can tell that it's glucose because the third carbon is, has a hydroxyl on the other side, the opposite side, of all the other hydroxyls. The hydroxyl pattern is what gives a sugar its identity. Um, two through five, especially. So, because you remember, number one can sometimes pinwheel around the uh, axes. Yes. So, two through five give a sugar its identity. Now, this is dextro. Okay. If we put a mirror right here, this is a mirror now, a mirror right here, we would see um, OH, 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 and then here's the carbon chain just really fast to make it super clear. And it would bond like that. Okay? Save a little bit of time. Carbon, 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 carbon. So this has an opposite um, hydroxyl group at the number three. And so it's still glucose. But if you tried to lay these on top of each other, you couldn't just bend this one around and have it work because then um, the structures, it's best explained. I, I had it explained to me this way once. My hands are pretty much identical in the same way that glucose is pretty much identical. My thumb is kind of like the third um, carbon there with the hydroxyl on one side or the other. I mean, it's pretty much the same, but if you want to lay them down on top of each other with the palms both facing the same way, the thumbs stick out to the other side. It's called an enantiomer. And so that's when they are a mirror image of each other. You can also do this with your feet, but you don't want to see my feet. So, moving on. So that is dextro and levo. Dextro is um, just an enantiomer of levo. Dextro is the one that makes us happy. So this is a smiley face. Woohoo! Dextro is the one that we can digest. Levo mm, is not the one that we can digest. OK. All right. Last thing. We've talked about empirical formula. We've talked about um, alpha and beta. We've talked about glycosidic bonding. We've talked about dextro and levo. Last thing that we're going to talk about on this particular video is um, monosaccharides. And actually, let me. Woo! Okay. Um, really fast. Monosaccharide. Monosaccharides. So this one's glucose. Really cool thing. You can make galactose with just one change. Take away that oxygen there and put it there, and then you have galactose. Galactose has number three and number four on the same side, okay?
and I'll just make that consistent there. Okay, and with just a little change. All right, so that's galactose. Next, we're going to make fructose. Okay, so for fructose, we go from a hemiacetal with acetone at the end to a hemiketal, and this is what I wanted was getting into a little bit earlier. Um, if you make a double bond right here, get rid of this double bond, and now it's CH2O H up here, and it's the same thing on either end for fructose. Um, CH2OH, C, here, I'll make it look the same. And so both ends look like that on fructose. And the double bonded O is on number two, all right? And that's because this bond is actually only a five membered ring, and so it goes from here down to uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so those five are in the ring. And so that is why this one and this one, they're just hanging off in a fructose ring. All right, um, fructose, yeah, and so that's fructose. It's got a um, ketone right here, a, double, a carbon double bonded to an oxygen in the middle of a chain. It's called a ketone. It's got a carbon here and a carbon here. Therefore, this is a ketone. Um, and this is called a hemiketal. That is the difference between a hemiacetal and a hemiketal. You now know glucose, galactose, and fructose. Glucose has just number three, galactose has three and four. Fructose has the ends made the same. It removes this end from the chain. It goes down to a five-membered ring. And then that makes this into a double, the uh, double bond oxygen because it's inside the ring where that oxygen still is. All right, hopefully this helps. Thank you, and let me know what else I can do. I will go over the uh, digestion and utilization of sugars in another video if that's needed.